So in this video, we're gonna look at Hess's law and enthalpy diagrams and how we can look at them separately but also integrated together. So Hess's law, uh, what it states uh, is that if we're looking at changes of enthalpy, the difference from start to finish uh, will be the same no matter what path we take to get to the start and finish. Okay, so let's look at for a, a couple examples here. So let's say, for example, we have this reaction, just very basically A plus C goes to, uh, A plus B goes to C. And we'll say that the enthalpy change for this reaction is equal to 10 kilojoules, okay? So now we have this reaction here, and what we can see is what we want to do is then we'd say, okay, well, what if we have right here, this is A and B, okay, and so we're going to diagram this. So as we go up here, our enthalpy increases. So then as we formed C up here, we would see that, okay, the change going up to C is equal to 10 kilojoules, okay? So we can diagram this just visually showing, this is what the enthalpy diagram is, visually showing what happens to our enthalpy. So as we go from A, plus A and B combining to form C, we increase in enthalpy by 10 kilojoules. Now we see, well maybe C can decompose into two new products, D and E. And here our enthalpy change is equal to negative 15 kilojoules, okay? So now we see as C goes to form D plus E, we're gonna go down 15 kilojoules, okay? And so this would be our two products that when D, uh, C decomposed into what it formed, D plus E, the change here is equal to negative 15 kilojoules, okay? So now what if instead of thinking about this different pathway, what if we went instead of A and B going to C and C going to D plus E, we can go straight from A and B going to D and E. And so we want to identify, well, what is the enthalpy change of these? Well, now we're going directly from A and B going to D and E. So we want to say, well, what is the enthalpy change here? Well, we know enthalpy is a state function. So it doesn't matter what path we took to get from start to finish, reactants to products. All that matters is what we start at and what we end up at. So we can see, well, we can look at this two-step process, A and B forming C and C going to D and E, or we can look at the direct process and the overall enthalpy change will be the same. So our enthalpy change here, I'm gonna call this one, two, and three. So one, two, and three now, uh, <clears throat> is gonna be equal to, well, if I add these two reactions together, we're gonna see that as we add those two reactions together, that's gonna lead us to C canceling out when we add these two together, leading us A and B going to D plus E. We would do the same to our enthalpy. So this would be equal to the enthalpy change for our first plus the enthalpy change to, of our second. So this would be 10 kilojoules plus negative 15 kilojoules or negative five kilojoules. So now this enthalpy change is negative five kilojoules. So now we're able to see we could either think about multiple steps in a process or going directly in one step for an overall reaction, the overall enthalpy change is the same no matter what the path is. And that's what Hess's law states, okay? So Hess's law states that as we go uh, on multiple steps, the overall reaction, we can just add up our enthalpies, okay? Now what if we looked at something different? Now what if we said, instead of A and B going to C, what if we went backwards? Okay, so what if we went back down here? So now we would have C going to A plus B. Well, we'd say, well, what is the enthalpy change now? Well, we're doing the opposite process. So like our starting and finaling have finished, start and final points have, have changed. And so our enthalpy change now of our reaction four, well, we did the opposite of reaction one. So it's gonna be the inverse of that. And so this would be equal to negative 10 kilojoules. So we did the opposite, right? We went from C to A and B, 
And so we see if we flip a reaction from what we started with here, the change in enthalpy is opposite. And then we get negative kilojoules per mole. So now we look at this, hopefully this gives us a good idea of how we can use Hess's law and how we can diagram Hess's law through enthalpy diagrams. Really useful in helping us visualize what is happening to our enthalpy.